Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. How's everybody doing out there? And our guest tonight is Dave Walsh, superstar Hi, VO friends. coach. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. How you doing, George? I'm doing great. All right. <laughs> I get to have both of you like right here. You know, you're right. You're not far away. That's I'm right. so like glad this. you're close by. It's a cl very close. So nice to have guests in the office. It's in the touching. in the room. Have you had other guests in the room at not all? Not that much. A few times. A couple of times this year. That's it. Yeah. Wow. The it's much more fun so much this way. Better this way. I especially like the energy this, like this. Yeah, especially yeah. with this huge audience that we have. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're going to talk with Dave uh, and, and his True Tell method and talk a little bit about AI and a bunch of other stuff. If you have any questions, all you got to do is go into the chat room in Facebook Live or YouTube Live. If by some strange reason you're watching on LinkedIn, even though nobody knows it's there, but you can try, go into the chat room and write your question, and Jeff Holman is sitting somewhere writing it all down, and Fever. he will transfer it all to us. Hey, and then, Ethan Salazar is in LinkedIn. He's in the he's he's in there comment. All right, Ethan, see that? Oh. We got welcome, a, Ethan. That's right. We got a great hour coming up, so yeah. don't go away. It's time for Voiceover Body Shop right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. <laughs> hey, I'm Dan Leonard. <laughs> I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Right. Tuned right in. Our guest tonight is Dave Walsh, and Dave's enjoyed a truly multifaceted career on both sides of the Hollywood glass as a successful artist, coach, and director, as well as an ex studio executive. Boy, you've been busy. I'm busy. Yeah. He's also spent the better part of the last decade coaching and cultivating the voiceover careers of some of the most established artists in the United States, Canada, and Latin America. Yes. For right. some reason, other parts oh. of the world I have not been to, so who oh. knows? Oh, I've, I've been to Chile. It's really cool. <laughs> I've not been to Chile. I've not been to South America. Yeah? Really. No, I've, I've, I've coached people in Latin America. I've coached people in Europe. I mean, that should be added to this, too. Right. Uh, and people now in, um, in, in South Korea, too. I have clients in, in Seoul. Yeah. So well, am I not? No, uh, just to swing shadow. us over. Just, just swing us over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. So I think that the, and again, it's indicative of just kind of the world since the last time I was here. Which I think was tw we were, we were online probably during the pandemic, yeah. And then in studio it was like 2018 or 2017 or something like that. But unreal, it, it's changed. You know, again, so much of the conversation we have now is about how international, how global this is, and yeah. the mm -hmm. fact that I travel, I sit, and I coach clients, and I pass the time zones one after another, after another, after another every day, and it's it's pretty incredible how we've got so many. You know, so many clients all over the world, yeah. you know, and One Voice UK is doing what it's doing. Um, the uh, the conference is coming up in Africa. I would, uh, oh, that was that was on Saturday. That was Saturday. I, I'm I was, sorry. I, I was forgot. actually I on that one. That's right. You were. Uh, yeah. You and Tim were both on that. Yeah. Now, of course, they were on. Tim and Mark Cashman were on an hour later. And Cashman as well. Yes. Right. So I immediately wrote to them and said, how can you poops get, get an extra hour of sleep? <laughs> I had to be up at 5.15 to be on this so I could address these Was it in Nairobi? It was in Lagos, Nigeria. In Lagos, Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. Mm. It was a lot of fun. Wow. Why is it is it is international because there's more international business because there's more out of US projects needing American voice? It's a combination. I think what's happened with particularly some of the managers and some of the agents um voices become so global that it's not just American voices. I think one of the things, and I've said this to both Joan Baker and Rudy Gaskins, is that one of the things that the Sovas Awards did when they, when they, a couple of years ago, is they started to bring more global voices to the public, and people start to know that there was so much for global voices. I remember hmm. there was one year, I think it was right before the pandemic, that there was a, there was a huge amount of Eastern Europe 
and South American actors that won Sovas Awards. And it put those countries on the map when it came to voiceover. People didn't even realize where the opportunities were. So even managers, Celia Siegel is one of those managers who mm-hmm. reps a lot of international clients. Um, from She's tuned so many, in. She really is tuned in. She yeah. really, really gets, she gets that part of it. Um, yeah, so I mean, think that it's not just American voices. Although I have a client in Seoul who, when I started working with her, her voice was what they wanted in Korea was very old school American. They wanted it hard. They wanted it articulated. Mm. Everything had to be that. And so when she started working with me, I, I needed to un-Koreanize the voice. Okay. So now, but now she's able to, she, her work is spread out around the, around the world. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, we had Wovocon last weekend yeah. in, in Orlando. We had somebody, we had a couple people from the UK. Yep. Colin McLean was there. Wonderful guy. And then um, I, I, you know, I, I took a lift ride back to the airport on, on Monday morning with uh, uh, Bill Williamson, who lives in Japan. Yeah. So we, Are these American expats? Yes. Yeah. Okay, got it. Well, no, Colin McLean is, no, is, William, is a Brit. William, Williamson gotcha. is... Yeah, he's in Japan. He's in Japan. And mm-hmm. I was surprised by that as I'm like, you're going, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going back to L.A., but then I got to go to, to Tokyo. Yeah. Well, you're that's another a kind day. of international... Totally. It's like yeah. we have American expats in China and Japan and Australia and yeah. Canary Islands and yeah. whatever. And Barry Severus, who's my client, the client in Seoul, South Korea, she came to VO Atlanta mm-hmm. from Seoul. She flew from Seoul directly to Atlanta and came to that. It was the first time she'd been. So wow. Too yeah. big. All right, we had it's, 87 it's at WovoCon. <laughs> It was, a nice, a, intimate, it was in a nice, it was a nice intimate group. <laughs> cool. Yeah, God, that's great. Good for you. How was it? Did you? It did was you enjoy? Fabulous. We had a great time. It was well planned. Uh, instead of giving out lots of swag, yeah. we gave people embroidered sweatshirts. Oh, nice. Very nice. And uh, portfolios, and mm. uh, you know, and we had a silent disco. And it was, <laughs> I saw the pictures of that. That was a lot of fun. I saw Emma O'Neill at the silent disco. Yeah. 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 And then we also announced that next year, um, Amy Snively has agreed to let us be the torchbearers of FAFCON next year. And she's actually going to train us on how to do it. Wow. Awesome. So, it's nice so, that that's official. And yeah. It's official that that's coming back. That was a very well loved conference for yep. and there wasn't about FAFCON. No, one person doesn't just kind of lament over it that it was just so. Except amazing. maybe Amy. Maybe Amy. <laughs> well, yeah, she's like, I've had enough. Maybe this is a lot of work. <laughs> but, anyway, yeah, yeah. let's get into the meat of the matter here. Yeah. Just, you know, now, how did your career start, and how did you make all these transitions from producer, executive, to voiceover, to coach? It, it, honestly, if I had to kind of paint a trajectory, it just, I don't know how it all just kind of evolved one thing after another. I started years ago as a talent agent assistant, and it was the best opportunity I had to learn the business. Uh, and it didn't matter what type of agenting it was. This was right. literary. Right. So ironically, I got this job in the writer's strike of 1988. So they kept me on through the entire strike. Um, but what I learned so much of was about contract writing. I understood, I learned the whole relationship between actors and agents. And so I, and I understood that when agents would have their weekly meetings, they would, you know, talk about the clients this one's doing this, this one's not doing that. Why is he painting the side of his house? He's supposed to have the book written. Right. But you started to realize, <laughs> swear to God, I, that was an actual conversation. So one of the things I realized was that you really, your agents are talking about you, uh, what you're doing and what you're not doing. And so I started to learn, really, quite frankly, how Hollywood worked. And we learned how the town operated, what a deal memo was, how you structure, how you pitch, all that kind of stuff. And then I went into publicity <clears throat> uh, for quite a while and uh, went into syndicated television and then went to Paramount. And when I was there, I was director of research. So I started to be able to package TV shows and I understood how to create research um, presentations and learned how to sell shows domestically and internationally. So you learn that side of the business. And at the same time, I was taking voiceover workshops. Um, I told the story before that I found a book called Word of Mouth mm-hmm. by Molly Ann Mullen and Sue Blue uh, at the um, Samuel French bookstore. And that became my Bible. That became the thing that really gave me inspiration to work in voiceover. And so first agent was in 95 with Abrams Artists and then kind of worked my way up there and really, really soaked in the whole business because I felt like, you know, people like Phil Tanzini. Phil Tanzini's been 
been working in voiceover since he was a kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's worked as a camera actor at CESD for years. And so when people like that, who I've known for so many years, I see these child actors that have been doing this for years. I said, I got to friggin' catch up to these people. You know, I came from a television production degree, so I immersed myself in coaching. I truly did. Um, and had some of the greatest coaches in the world. Tom Pinto and Nick O'Mano were my first. Um, I owe an enormous amount of my career to Maurice Tobias. Uh, in incredible amounts of my career to Maurice. Uh, and agents and managers that were just incredible for me in my career. Took a little time to take off, but it, when it finally did, I just, I just had immersed myself in so much of coaching. And I still value that as, you know, obviously for what I do now. Um, but again, as you guys know, some of you know the story or not, but I did have a vocal injury that caused me to really have to stop mm. doing what I did in voiceover and have to learn <clears throat> that I had, a, I had a disorder called spasmodic dysphonia, um. which, was the, which was the name for the strangled voice syndrome. I did so much promo, so much trailer, so much narration. I was speaking from a voice that was down here. So mm. I was pushing my voice into my throat and it was causing my vocal cords to bend. Mm. Um, when you do that kind of a thing, vocal cords are, are they, they have so much space around them, they're circular. And when you compress the voice down, it actually causes them to swell. And I found a way to strangle them. Mm. And so I ended up going to the speech pathology department at UCLA and they told me I had a disorder called spasmodic dysphonia. There was no, dis there was no cure. And they said the only cure was putting Botox, no cure, but treatment was to put Botox into the vocal cords because they said this was neurological. Mm. So when they said it was neurological, they said your brain is sending involuntary spasms to your vocal cords. Now, I'm the one that's in this body. <laughs> and I'm going, wait a minute, what? What, do mean, what do you mean it's involuntary spasms? And I knew that there was something off with the diagnosis. So I opted out of the Botox and I found a doctor in West LA who was the only doctor in the entire world that didn't treat this with Botox. His belief, and it's the belief I still hold, is that we all have a vocal identity. Parents, husbands, partners, you know, you know business owners, wh whatever you are, Mm. and you walk through life with that particular identity, you will chameleonize your voice to fit that particular moray or that particular part of your life. He said, your problem is that you spent so much time making a voice. I was classically trained as an actor, mm -hmm. but then I put a voice on top of it to add more for trailer, for promo, whatever else, and it worked until it didn't yeah. work anymore. Right. So I had to go back to school to learn how to speak. And as I did, I started working with people all over the world. He, they all came to LA because he was the only doctor that didn't use Botox. So we had, <clears throat> pardon me, we had executives from uh, Johannesburg. We had singers from Tokyo. We had entrepreneurs from Oslo. They came from everywhere. And I looked at this and I said, wait a minute. He's not an actor. She's not an actor. And they all have the same thing I have. So this isn't an acting problem. This is a global communications problem. Right. It's a cultural problem. It's a cultural thing. And right. it actually crossed, this is, I'm glad you brought that up because it crossed cultures. It wasn't an American thing because of a certain masculinity, femininity thing. Right. It was part of that, but that's how, how, how men and women, it was believed, you know, want to sound more feminine, act more masculine, whatever it is. Right. And so what I started to do was, to be honest with you guys, I thought, I thought it was over. I really did because... I could not trust my voice anymore. I couldn't come in and sit with you guys. I couldn't go. I couldn't tell my agents. I had people saying to me, don't tell your agents your career is over if you say anything. So I didn't. And I started to coach actors just to kind of make some extra money mm -hmm. after having had this incredibly successful career. But what I started to do was to get actors to not, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, speak inauthentically, that they were understanding what the hell they were talking about. And it started to shift the careers. They started to book and book and book. And people would say to me, this is so easy. How have I been killing myself all this time? Mm. So I realized it was more of an effortless thing for them. And so over time, the program came, it just came. I didn't, at the time I was coaching, and I haven't really said this to you guys ever. I didn't tell anyone that I was coaching that I had a vocal problem. No one knew the reason I was coaching. Uh. I didn't know if people thought, well, Dave's washed up. 
Dave couldn't work anymore. I mean, these yeah, things go through your head. Well, that yeah. whole inferiority. Con- exactly. No, people, no, imposter syndrome. Right, imposter syndrome. That's people that do, do those that don't teach. And I'm right, going, right. great, this is how people are going to think. And <clears throat> eventually, I will say this publicly, Celia Siegel, speaking of, we went to have lunch after that's voiceover in 2015, and we sat at lunch, and she said to me, I told her the story. Nobody knew the story at that point, and she said, Dave, that's the thing that makes you you. I want that guy, not because you're better than anybody else, but because that's what you have to offer. Right. Her mm-hmm. thing is branding and really... And, it is, yeah. and she actually gave me permission to be able to step forward and say, look, I'm, I'm damaged like everybody else, mm-hmm. but now we use it in a different way. Right. So the True Tell, which is the name of the program that it became over the last eight years since I actually named it something, it's, mm-hmm. really, it's really caught on, and I've been so appreciative of the people that have used it, people that continue to use it, because it really is about getting you to, to, to speak from your, authentic, your authentic self, your 100% authentic self, yeah. you know? And that to me over time really became my purpose. That became the thing that I really, I mean, even since I, the last time I talked to you guys, it, I've even, I'm even framing it differently mm-hmm. the way I feel about it, you know? So it's, it's, yeah. I've been very lucky in that, in that respect. Yeah. Well, the pandemic allowed people to think about it for, oh. Like, all right, what am I going to do today? And oh you know, my the, god! You know, and and of course you were you were doing almost everything virtually by then too. I was already doing it, so I didn't yeah. really, <laughs> I didn't move from my house. <laughs> I literally was in the same place. I'd had sessions with you because I was setting things up in my house, and we were doing things virtually. He couldn't travel. You couldn't travel. Mm-hmm. Nobody could go anywhere. And so people learned how to put together their home studios. You two know only too well. Um, but it really changed. Not for me personally, but it changed the whole industry around us and how, mm-hmm. I mean, eight, the first agency to close, there was an agency that closed, Paradigm closed its voiceover department the day after the Utah Jazz tested positive. That's when the whole nation went insane. Right. That was on uh, Thursday. On Friday, Paradigm closed its doors <laughs> to voiceover. They closed the entire voiceover department in one day. And I remember all of us going, who's next? Because huh. that was because... Paradigm had really, um, a lot of their money was based in their live act, their live event department. That was a huge part of Paramount, of Paramount, of Paradigm's right, bottom yeah. line. And when that went away, they shored up like in five seconds. Oh. So it was crazy how that happened. Jeez. Really? So yeah, but I mean, again, like you said, the, the whole pandemic really brought home the whole idea of the home studio. It brought the whole idea, as I said to actors, you're going to have to self-direct enough with this being more helped. self-sufficient totally more versatile yeah, which yep freaked a lot of people out yeah and george and i experienced that especially the day that, after day the people that did like a certain thing yep especially here in hollywood i do this one thing i get booked three times a year for this voice <laughs> <laughs> now what I do i do yeah. yeah yeah i had some of those clients yeah, yeah. i mean you know it's bob bergen time. has been very vocal about the fact that he needed to you know up his upgrade his studio to broadcast quality and now he doesn't want to go to you know now he loves being at home yeah and was never part of his world mm-hmm. you know so it was you know it wasn't as much of a part of his world but yeah, yeah. it was crazy how it changed yeah just dealing with people like i don't know how to do any of this and we had to calm them down and say okay look we're gonna make it super duper simple for you and uh, which is what george and i do I can't believe, I can't imagine how you guys, you know, the deluge of people that just must have been knocking on the door saying, help me, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, or as, as Mark Cashman described it, we were busier than a one-legged guy in an ass-kicking <laughs> contest. So. 2021, 20, 20, for whatever reason, that was the real peak. That was the pinnacle it. Was yeah. 2021. Yeah, we were very, Because I think very it was, busy. there was a delay. You had the initial people going, I got to get my act together. Yeah. Right. Then you had like six to eight, eight months, months later. Yeah. Tail end of 2020, beginning of 2021, people are like, oh, this isn't going away, is it? Yeah, this is, we're okay. still here. All right, I got to yep. do this now. And, <laughs> totally. And things really like picked up. Yeah. But then there was no equipment available. Yeah. Because they couldn't keep up with, I mean, you know, they couldn't keep up with the demand. Right. Yeah, we got creative. <laughs> oh, yeah, we yeah. We really did. Which I can I imagine. Like, I like being creative. You guys, you yeah. guys were the, you guys really, really were the saviors of this industry because you know you and tim tippets and tim friedlander and you know they're in jordan reynolds i mean you guys mm-hmm. all i mean 
really saved us. Collectively, so collectively as a group, out of it. you really did. <laughs> honestly, 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 <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, um, so you're, you're you're coaching all these different people in all these different lands across the uh, across the globe. Yep. What what are some of the kind of problems that many voice talent need to overcome? What are some of the most common problems? Because we yeah. have a lot of people who are just starting out out there and we can perhaps help them avoid these problems before they start. What, but what do you see? Well, here's the thing. Now, after we've just, I've just praised these gentlemen, I am going to say one thing. I think that people are putting studios together too fast. Mm -hmm. If you're new, okay, if you're new to this, I think the whole thing is I've got an entire studio put together, I'm ready to go. No, you're not. <laughs> and I say to people, I would rather you invest, and I want you to invest in these guys, but I want you to invest in your career first. You need to invest in your coaching, your talent, your storytelling. I that could is not believe when I saw the polar opposite advice just on YouTube the other day. I'm like, well, first yeah. of all, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I literally put like in the comments, little, uh, you know, emoticons. Yeah. I had a horse. No, I had a cart, and then I had a horse. That was my comment. That's awesome. <laughs> I love like, that. You have this all wrong. Man. Yeah, I've I've used that that <laughs> icon in a number of presentations. Like, yeah, you're not ready yet. You're not ready. No. You know, but, and, but I think that it means. But support. should they have a practice mic? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. You should absolutely have a practice mic. You should definitely and definitely start practicing on editing using editing software. Learning how yeah. to do those things. Your mic doesn't have to be broadcast quality right. when you're starting. But also, you don't want to spend a lot of money on a practice mic. You want it's to like be learning photography. You're not. You don't need to go buy a ten thousand no, dollar camera right. to learn how to take a photo. No, you have to not learn at all. How to, you know, hold, you know, frame an image. You have to learn how to just do the basics. Totally. That's, that's yeah. where you start. One yeah. correction, though, we no longer call it broadcast quality. That's a term from the '60s. What it means is it doesn't sound bad. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> we don't have a slick uh, acronym yeah, I mean, for no, that. No, that's true. Because actually, we have one. It's whistle. Whistle. What it's supposed to what sound like. What it's supposed like. to sound, sound like. Sound like whistle. Yeah. Yeah. We know what whistle is, and whistle is why you hire us to make sure that what you give them is whistle. <laughs> so whistle takes the place of there we broadcast go. Quality. Broadcast quality. Right. I I think though what's crazy is people have auditioned for things and book jobs on on mics, uh, literally taking their mics into cars. Their you know or their phone into their closet. Right. David Kay had a picture one time. I have it somewhere. He took a picture of him in the bathroom at LAX <laughs> doing a session. Jesus. I remember this, and he actually put the picture somewhere. David, if you if you ever hear watch this, uh, I'll I, nag I, him about I, it. I think there's a picture somewhere. I'll, in fact, I should email him. I and see ask him almost him every month, so I'll, yeah, I'll ask him about yeah. it. Yeah, he, and then we'll go. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think that spending the time on really on your read, spending time on understanding who you are as a talent, you know, and what you do coming in, you know, when you're talking to somebody like Celia, or you're talking to somebody about branding your agents, if you have agents or even on your pay to plays mm -hmm. in your own marketing, your own marketing has become the, such a huge part of this business where getting your website SE, SEO optimized, um, getting a CRM program, talking to people like Ann Ganguza and Mark Scott about how to create a marketing program. And it's a huge part of this. Right. And people mm -hmm. are just, you know, they, they need to really get an understanding of who they are first. Again, they're true tell, understanding who they are as mm -hmm. an actor, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 If you're just joining us, our guest is Dave Walsh. Hello. He's very eloquent at all this. If you have a question about how he coaches or some suggestions about how to help your delivery, Put them in the chat room in Facebook, uh, Facebook Live or YouTube Live, and we will get to those questions in just a little bit. So make sure you do that. Yep. Um, AI. I mean, you and I have talked about this a little bit. I wish I had spiked my water before I came. <laughs> oh, Holy crap. I mean, people are, some people are in, in a, the sky is falling panic. Yep. And then you have people who are like, eh, it's a nothing burger. And, but it seems that the, it's the somewhere in the middle. Yes. It's, it's yeah. I mean, <laughs> what are your, th what are your thoughts about this new technology that some are embracing and other are <clears throat> screaming and running down the hall with? Well, first of all, it's scary as hell. I mean, it's, br it's brilliant in and of itself as a technology, but for our business, as we've all talked about, it's, it's, 
it's scary as hell because of what the possibilities are, what they've, what it's already done to a certain part of the business. Um, the thing that I will say is I think people need to spend, I'm going to go back to the, the S word again, to storytelling that I think personally, this industry is about to experience a shift because mm. there's going to be a tipping point because so many people are either in it or want to get in voiceover that the business is not going to be able to, to sustain. It just can't. Too many people. The number of yeah. people, it just, it's eventually going to create some form of a tip mm. where the people that remain are the ones that are the storytellers because yeah. AI is going to start from the bottom right. and take businesses like telephony and start moving its way up. Our ability as actors, I say to actors all the time, slow the tide and what what nava is doing right now with the you know with the mission statement the pledge that they put out last week and what that what that board is really doing you know karen gilfrey and tim and the whole board and what people are doing really to 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 really turn the tides on this are huge however technology is technology and it finds its way but the truth is the people that will survive and i'm going to call it a nuclear winter a VO nuclear winter, you want to be a cockroach. You want to be the cockroach of voiceover. You want to be able <laughs> to still be the storyteller to survive it. Right. That yeah. the business itself can sustain, you know, the number of people. People are saying to me, I want to be with an LA or New York agent. I get it. But how many <laughs> slots do you think they have? You know? Right. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying that to dissuade anybody from from being a part of this business but well, you need to be realistic about it there's still humans casting people yeah it's not ai's casting humans no right <laughs> yeah. it's humans yeah. casting humans Bro. Right. yeah I'm, they, I'm, they, they want human aspects right well, emotions totally. there's, there's no computer that can make the thousands of decisions that i have to make looking at a phrase or a line of copy where i'm going to go up where i'm going to go i'm going to cry i'm going to do this it can't do it even yet. If, even yet, even and, if and, well, but even, my voice. even if even if it could do it, someone would have to sit there and program, and program it, it, yeah, and direct the computer to do all those things. And can they do all of those things faster than the actual actor can perform with real human emotion? I don't think so. No, I, I think they're you know figure that out after over time. They're going to figure out right that yeah, we can get a convincing human speech. We can make it sound like <clears> anybody we want. But it's still the uncanny valley. It's still not going to sound yeah. human. Right. It's going to sound like a facsimile. There's there, but there is, you know, even there's something now where they're talking about when you get spam calls. If you pick up the phone, that what they're doing is recording your voice right. mm. on the other end and using that voice to then go to use it with AI and be able to, yeah. you know, the whole thing about hunting down. I'm I'm caught in Guatemala and I can't get out. I've been I kidnapped. Right. You know all that kind of thing. Yeah. But when it comes to this particular business, I think. Again, it's the people that are the consummate storytellers mm -hmm. that when you're talking, like you said, the nuance of a story, you know, are the you- The nuance and the reaction. Yeah. Like yeah. how you can immediately react to direction, make a change, make an adjustment. That's, that's and, and on top of the storytelling, right. on top of the acting. That just, just the mechanics of that. Yeah. It's not something a computer is going to be able to do. It's going to no. be fast. Yeah. But I think telephony, I think telephony has already started being attacked, not attacked by it's kind of a strong word, but it is. Telephony is Eroded. the first level yeah. where, where it's going to, where it's going to really get, be, it's going to penetrate. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. it only makes sense, yeah. you know, but again, I think that I want people to absolutely fight for this. I think people absolutely should be active and proactive, but at the same time, please focus on story please focus on your on your craft because it's the only way you're going to slow the tide right because it won't be able to figure it out as fast as you to your point george it won't be able to figure things out as fast as you will right so yeah okay well we're talking with dave walsh again if you have a question throw it in the chat room right now so we can get to it in the next segment and uh, we also might have a little fun with uh, what we always do. Fun with words. Fun with words, and he'll direct me through some copy, and so you can see. Just wait. Okay. We'll be right back at VoiceOver Body Shop, so don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. 
As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent, and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 provide both that accurate, transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio, less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Hey everybody, this is the time of the show where we thank our wonderful sponsor, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and many other technologies that allow studios to collaborate real time with talent and their clients all around the world. And the tool that most voice actors want to look at in their career, if they're stepping it up and really, let's say, for example, you're trying to get an agent, what are the things that agents are going to look for in your home studio and being ready to do the big jobs, especially those commercials, they're going to look to see if you have Source Connect. It's a tool that is considered to be the industry standard for a lot of how the voiceover business operates in this modern age. We recommend you guys get familiar with it. So head over to source-elements.com, get yourself a free 15 day trial over there and get yourself started. If you need help, they have a lot of training and we also at George the Tech can help you out with the more advanced technical setup in your home studio. Anyway, let's go on to the next part of the show and listen to this next sponsor so we can get back to Dave right after this. Hey, do you know this guy? He's Michael Kostroff, an actor you've seen on lots of shows like The Wire, Billions, The Blacklist, Law & Order SVU, Molly's Game, Les Miserables, and The Producers. I took his audition Psych 101 class a few years back and it was the best acting class I ever took. He's now releasing his latest video course, Audition Myths, Tough Truths, and Logic, a three-video series where he debunks actors' most common misunderstandings and misinformation about the audition process. Here's what Michael has to say about this series. If there's one tool that has been most helpful in working through my fears, insecurities, anxieties, and self-criticism about auditioning, it's my good friend Logic. Once I've disproved an illogical thought, all that mental noise gets tamped down. You can now get lifetime access to this series for just $195 on nearly 50% savings. Registration is open now but closes Friday night at 9 p.m. Pacific. Here's the link, auditionpsych101.com forward slash join. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back here at VoiceOver Body Shop. Thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, or if you're watching this later this week. George, George, sorry. Uh, What's it? Sorry. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's good to watch the show live, which is why I'm glad to see there's so many people watching the show live because they can ask questions of you. Otherwise, they're like, I'd like to ask them this, but... Oh, it's not live anymore. And then that makes them sorry and sad. Exactly. So that's okay. We don't we don't <laughs> right. want people sorry and sad at all. <laughs> that's right. So what do we got in questions, George? All right. Does anybody care? Let's yeah, jump. of course we do. Yeah, we definitely got some questions Good. queued up here. Awesome. Let me jump into that. So first one I see in the list from Grace. Grace Newton. Hi, Grace. Hi, Grace. Hi, Grace. She's a wonderful <laughs> regular on the show. Um, aside from good acting chops, what is an important skill set to develop for video game voiceover? Um... That looks like the question. Yeah. Besides acting, uh, I think definitely if you can, a couple things. One is definitely improv. If you've never taken improv, um, which I know is a form of acting itself, but improv, especially for every area of voiceover, particularly commercial, I think it really helps you to loosen up. Uh, but to, you know, especially if you're going to be going into something like motion capture, if you happen to be doing a video game that includes MO, uh, MC, excuse me, um, that 
you need to have that flexibility and that, that, that physical aspect of being free of doing that. Uh, with regards to motion capture itself is learning motion capture. I think that's another part of this that, which has become a massive part of video games that, you know, when we started doing video games, when I started doing video games, you know, motion capture was not part of it at all. We didn't do that. But now it's become almost a given as part of, um, you've seen so many talent that have posted on Insta and on TikTok, et cetera, from their motion capture sessions, from their motion capture workshops. So get into, if you can, Grace, get into both of those areas. And if you're not in uh, LA or New York, there are, there are plenty of workshops, obviously, you can take, um, particularly for uh, improv, um, to really kind of expand those chops. Yeah. Good it, question. It's very physical. It's very it's physical. It's incredibly physical. Yeah. It is, definitely. But again, because of the pandemic, we go back to what we were talking about, places like Second City, places like The Groundlings, places like Up, Upright Citizens Brigade, you know, there are a lot of places that started to create their online presence in improv and a lot of their classes, you never were able to do these kinds of things if you didn't live in LA or New York. Mm -hmm. So now you have that ability and it's a, it's a real bonus. It's a real bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Max Goldberg asks, uh, Hey Max. Yeah. Uh, given your busy uh, coaching schedule, do you ever do any voiceover work still? Uh, I do actually. I actually, um, I don't do a lot of it. Um, I had an audition today, as a matter of fact, before I came here, uh, I don't, I really find, Max, that because I went back to acting after I rehabbed my voice, and even when I was coaching, you know, so much, but I then really realized that my purpose was really helping people to overcome whatever their insecurities were, whatever their authenticity issues were, uh, and so that became my focus. So I will audition, <clears throat> pardon me, um, every once in a while, but for me, the core of the work is really helping people like you. Uh, that's really what I focus on. Yeah. Cool. Let's let's talk about True Tell for just a couple of minutes yeah. here. Um, Before we do that, there's a quick plug about True Tell. There, there is. is. Yeah, this is from Beatrice Ryan. Um, she says, grateful to Dave yes. after the 2021 remote VO Atlanta X session he led on True Tell, he gave me additional tools to get out of my head and get real. So thanks. That's to Dave. awesome, Beatrice. And I actually remember you in that in that workshop too. I do remember that. Thank you for that. And I'm really glad that, you know, that's it, to an, go back to Max's question. That's the reason for things like that. That's why I really do it every day. I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Appreciate yeah. it. So now I've worked with you, and I understand what it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I created my my uh, arsenal of of uh, essence words. Well, no, the people I know. My oh, the people my, you know. My, yeah. ars my arsenal of acquaintances. There you go. Yeah. Which, <clears throat> which I refer to whenever I'm like, all right, I don't know what this stuff is about, but yeah. I know somebody who does. So <laughs> really, what, what, <laughs> not imitate them, but how would they say How that? would they say that? Yeah. Right. Well, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, you, you explain it a little bit more, sure. more detail. Those of you that don't know what the program is, the name of the program is The True Tell, as I said, and the definition of The True Tell is your 100% authentic opinion about every single thing you talk about in this world. It is your authenticity of how you see it. Right. So we know how it feels if you guys are going to have a conversation with somebody. There's an effortlessness, even if it's a conversation that's, I don't know, heated. But you'd still feel authentic. You would feel that the conversation is focused. Mm -hmm. You're not scattered unless you had a really tough day. And we know how that happens when people are talking. Mm -hmm. But normally we all know, we understand why we're having a conversation with somebody. First and foremost, we understand what we're talking about. Then we understand the person we're talking to. And the big one is why. Why am I having this conversation with this person in the first place? Other than the fact that I have a script in front of me and I have to book a job. And I say to actors all the time, that's not a good enough reason. So the actors that will go into a studio or they'll go into their, their home studio and you'll read a piece of copy, if you don't understand what it is you're reading and understanding who you're talking to and why, you know that feeling of, like, especially when you're really, you're kind of discombobbled in a conversation, you might not be prepared, that pull in your mm. stomach, that <laughs> gurgling. Yeah. Yeah. That you're you're feeling, about to open your mouth and you're not really sure. You're not really sure. That's called being out of true tell. That mm. called, that's called not speaking authentically. The problem that actors have is they go, well, I got to book this. I got to do it anyway. So I push, I push through the inauthenticity 
and it feels like, pardon me, shit. It <laughs> feels like it's not real. Right. That's what you're, that's what we're going for here. Mm. There isn't, this program isn't about, you know, playing nice, nice. It's not about, you know, your voice is beautiful, therefore you should be able to tell a good story. <laughs> Absolutely not. In fact, your voice is so sensitive that it's going to rat you out so fast when you're not connected. <laughs> I don't know. You may have someone that actually would say to you, are you listening to me? Are we, are you here? Yeah. 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 You know, that kind of thing. When you're like that, you're not in true tell. Yeah. And that, and so the whole principle of the program goes back to everyday communication, how it feels when you're connected and how it feels when you're not. Right. That's the foundation of it. Yeah. I mean, there's many a time when you'll do an audition and it's like, this was written for me. I can understand it. Yep. And and I can feel very, very confident. And then there'll be something talking about something I know nothing about. Right. Which is very few things, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know, cultural literacy is really important. That's really important. In, in the voiceover business. but And when you can't, you pull out your list. Right. And we're going to talk about what that is. So what Dan's referring to is when we work together, we talked about who are the people in your world that can tell the story you're about to tell if you can't tell it. So that's when you bring out your characters. And I say to actors all the time, this is how on camera and stage actors create subtext for the characters they create. So the actor then lives inside of the character. And it isn't about imitating a voice. Right. It's about living inside of the skin, basically, of that, of that character. And that character could be somebody you know, it could be somebody you know professionally or personally. It could be an actor. It could be a character from a film. It could be a, you know, a sports star. It could be anybody that you think would be appropriate to tell the story. And you speak through that person. The big challenge is the vulnerability of an actor actually living, like a voice actor living inside of the of a skin of an actor, right. of a character. Video games and animation, that's where everybody loves it because it's play. Mm -hmm. But people, time and time again, will say to me, my biggest problem is when I see A-N-N-O-U-N-C-E-R. Mm. Announcer, for those of you that are slow. Um, <laughs> the, the word announcer, that, that's the word that literally sets people into orbit. They're like, I have no idea why I'm here. <laughs> if I were a character in a video game, I know why I'm there. I've got characters. But if I'm the, the voice of Chipotle, I don't have a clue why I'm doing it. So mm. that's what the key to this is. It's really about zeroing in on that specificity oh, wow. big time yeah yeah and, and, it, and it works and and you and be, by doing that you feel a lot more comfortable as you're reading the copy that's it yeah. it it is all about the effortlessness of of the story it really is yeah yeah we got a question from ethan salazar got, go for mike it. too is right before him if you hey, ethan. Get mike. Yeah, we'll get there okay uh want me to read that one yeah ethan says hey uh first thanks dave for such highlights on voice risks you're welcome also i want to get into real vo business i won't i want both knowledge and tools but haven't made it into the real biz okay how should i get or look up for an agent so he's it's the get question of the, the how do i get for the, the horse here yeah where's your visual george <laughs> yeah, the, the horse the cart you got to get them in the right order so dave where does he need to go first before the agent part comes you, into play? The, so the fact that you were saying that um, you weren't, Ethan, you weren't, uh, you really weren't in the biz yet. It really depends on what you determine that to be. When you say in the biz, do you mean auditioning at all? Do you mean auditioning on a pay to play, auditioning because you've gotten the work yourself? Uh, if you're doing any of those things, you are in the biz, that you are in the craft itself and so part of that to move your way up is to continue to coach to and again it really is and believe me i know that this is a business where all of us that are coaches yes i know it there is a monetary exchange for this type of work it isn't about trying to build up the business my business in any higher it is a reality of the arts. It doesn't matter whether it's music, whether it's camera, whether it's voiceover, whether it's whatever. It's like sports. It doesn't matter what industry where craft is involved. It is not the kind of business where you can come in and expect to just fly through it and get in it, get in it quickly because there are so many other people, Ethan, who have been in this for a long time. What I will say to you, which is a great educational tool is 
go to the websites of agencies such as um, Atlas, CESD, DPN, SBV, um, KMR. Um, there's, I mean, there's so many others, obviously, but these agencies, Buckwald in New York, uh, A3, these agencies are the tops in the business. And I know there were plenty of my other friends we've left out, so I apologize. <laughs> But there are, these are the people who are at the top echelon of the business. Those are the people who are your chief competitors. So I think for a lot of people to get kind of the sobering reality of how it is, go to those websites, listen to the demos that are there, listen to the competition. That will give you inspiration, I swear. It's not meant to dissuade you or to deflate you. It's meant to inspire you that these people are doing what they do because they are the best. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but keep at it, Ethan. Don't ever don't feel like you're not in it. Just don't don't rush yourself for the agent. The agent will come right in time. Yeah. yeah. If, if you're making money, they're going to come find you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just make sure that they can find you. That's the other thing. Right. If, you, if you're making money, make sure you have a website. Make sure you have a way for them to find you. That's key. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, OK, question from Mike Cunningham. What is the best way to understand who you are? without cutting yourself off at the knees, like limiting yourself? Interesting question. How to find out who you are without cutting yourself off at the knees. You know, and yeah, if you're, so if, I, I guess if, you know, you're trying to be somebody else, yeah. and how can you still be, be you? Oh, got it, got it. Okay, so the big thing, that's a really, Mike, that's mm. a really good question. <laughs> yeah. um, I think when you're being another character, and this is where actors play, this goes back to vulnerability that I talked about a couple minutes ago, that when you step into a character, it's, I use the word all the time, immersive, okay? Which means that you are living in the values and the morals of the character. The vulnerability I talked about a couple minutes ago is letting go of, and this goes back to sound. This is why I started doing what I do. It is absolutely none of your business how you sound. Hmm. Because we hear our voices one one thousandth of a second faster than anybody else. So I'm hearing my voice. If I'm talking to George and Dan, I can hear my voice one one thousandth of a second faster. I think my voice sounds slightly different than they hear it. Right. Because of the yeah, bones. It's physiological. It's physiological. It's passing through the jaw. And the, all totally. That stuff. Yeah. Right. The bones in your face, it vibrates differently. Right. So when you're, when you're performing, it's when you're trying to kind of lean. It's not that you're doing this really, but you're leaning out it's almost like you're leaning out the window to listen to your voice. Like you're trying to lean, even with your, if you have cans on, get rid of them. Um, Thank you. You're le <laughs> leaning out the window to hear your voice. You can't rub your tummy and pat your head at the same time. Some people are brilliant. They can. Um, but when you're trying to tell the story and listen to yourself at the same time, that's when you compromise. Actually, Mike, you compromise the story by trying to be yourself and the character. You have to let go of you and let the character take over. And the big word is trust. Trusting that the voice will turn itself exactly where it needs to go to tell the story because it does that all day, every day. It's all of a sudden when you step in front of this thing and you suddenly, you, you suddenly become so insecure that mm. all of a sudden it's like your voice is gonna fail you, mm. which it really is not. And it's the trusting, believe me when I tell you after losing your voice and thinking that it's literally gone to crap and only to come back from that, I really try to strongly encourage people that have any kind of vocal problem to seek help for that. But people that are insecure about their own voice, one woman said to me, I hate the sound of my voice. You're in the wrong business. Well, yeah. <laughs> but then I was also in a workshop recently, um, um, this great uh, voice actor, J.P. Karliak, has a group called Queer Vox. Um, he and uh, another great... Uh, talent and one of my clients, Lindsay Rousseau, they're at the, the head of this organization. And when I asked people in that group what they thought of their voices, the first person said revolutionary. Hmm. So the difference between the woman that didn't love her voice and yeah. the person that said they, they were, their voice was revolutionary, hell yeah. Huh. So that's the kind of thing that you want to get inspiration for. Your voice is always going to be changing because your life is always going to be changing. If right. that makes sense. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does. Good right. question. We got a little bit of time. Let's run through a script here and, and, show, and show everybody how this system works. Okay. 
So I've prepared a script for Mr. Leonard, if you so choose to accept. This script is for you. It's a 15-second spot. Don't worry about mm -hmm. the time. Um, so this is for a product called Krylon, which is a rust protector. Right. <laughs> Here's a plug. Um, okay, so we're going to give Dan a, uh, a little bit of time to look at it. And this is what everybody else should do. When you look at the script, now this script intentionally does not have specs on it. It doesn't have any direction. So Dan has absolutely no idea who he's supposed to be, what he's supposed to say, how he's supposed to sound. Okay? So I'm just going to give you that. Okay. So you've got, you do your thing. Yeah. As someone who uses this product, though, it makes it a lot easier. Okay. <laughs> okay. But let me stop for a second. Okay. When people say that to me, they go, this will be easier. And the problem with that is what? Um, I'm not like everybody else. And there's, you know. Um, well, the other thing was, since when the hell does it have to be hard for you to book a job? Right. If it's, if it's going to help you if you use the product, mm -hmm. I say, hell yeah. Right. But it's also knowing who am I telling this to and convincing them of such thing. So Remember, it's not a convincing. Right. It's having the conversation. Right. But we also want to go back to, we talked earlier about the why. Why right. are you telling the story at all? Right. Other than the fact I just handed you a script. Okay. All right. Well, let me read through it once and let's see. Okay. If, okay. All right. Why does Krylon's new rust protector dry in only eight minutes and not two hours like the leading rust competitor? Because a lot can happen in two hours. For performance, you don't have to wait for. Choose Krylon. Okay. First of all, how did it feel? Fairly comfortable. Okay. I mean, there are, for one, just running through it and just saying it, it's, you know, it's like, okay, this is how I would say it. But who else, you know, might, might do it differently? Or how would I do it differently? And how would I try to connect with somebody who doesn't understand why Krylon is such a great product. Well, let me ask you a question. Before okay. we even go there, what, what does the copy actually mean? Um, that it makes... Uh, there's a lot going on in your life, so I have to worry about paint drying. Mm -hmm. and, so this prevents you from doing that. Right. Now, the question is, what's your true tell about... Now, true tell, again, is your 100% authentic opinion about everything you're talking about. Do you agree with that? Yeah. For the most part. Okay. So when you say something like, yeah, for the most part, do you think that the creative director of the agency or if the company is going to want to pay you a session fee, plus 10, um, if you Sometimes think, 20, and you yeah. say, yeah, well, all right. So your true tell about it is, it's okay. Like it's true, but who cares? Right. Right. So that's your attitude going into it versus everything in advertising is a good thing. Everything is that. So the huh. question is, you have a couple of choices when you're telling the story. I'm giving you kind of this, some extra, um, this is gift with purchase. In addition to telling the story as you, mm -hmm. you also can tell the story to the camera. Right. Or somebody else. But because you use Krylon, we're not going to have you tell the story as another character. Why, why waste good, you know, Leonard time? We've got some Leonard skin in the game. We don't want you to go with somebody else. Right. right. So if you're going to tell the story to camera... You've obviously got your own kind of side part of the house set up for tools and everything else. Right. All right. So if you're going to tell that story, we know there's a hell of a lot you got going on in two hours, right? Right. All right. So we're going to, we're going to put the story in your backyard. Or we're going to put it wherever, where, where do you usually normally store the, the Krylon? Um, right behind this curtain. Okay. <laughs> so right behind this curtain is where it is. So... It's a story you tell to camera, and you're the on-camera spokesperson now. Oh, okay. All right. Now tell the story. Okay. Why does Krylon's new rust protector dry in only eight minutes, and not two hours like the leading rust competitor? Because a lot can happen in two hours. For performance, you don't have to wait for. Choose Krylon. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. Yes. So the camera, it, the camera becomes such a great part of this because you put anybody in front of the camera us anybody else and the red light goes on all of a sudden every single thing they say suddenly gets elevated in value right. everything just sits up so the mm. shift in that read we heard it in sound right 
I didn't say to you, make sure you say the leading Rust competitor. This time, it actually, you found the nuggets of where to hit the words versus, well, I've been taught in VoiceOver 101 that I'm supposed to hit the words <laughs> and do what I do with the product. Right. You naturally find the intonations because the reality of the relationship you have to the product is real. Right. Does that make sense? It makes true. total sense. It's yeah, true. And, it, and it's a matter of, and true. <laughs> so true. that's it. In two takes... When you act, if you decide to do it to camera because you couldn't think of anybody to tell it to, right? Camera always works beautifully because it just all of a sudden it's it just all of a sudden sits up, right? And does it have more impact? How did it feel? Felt great, yeah. Okay, and that's and again, that's the goal of every audition yeah. for it to feel great. That is all that matters. Thank God we had a camera. <laughs> <laughs> good job on that. <laughs> Thank you, really Dave good. Walsh, everybody. Really appreciate that. Thanks awesome. for being with us. Thank you so much. I right. appreciate it. Always fun to have, have you. We here. talked our way all the way out of this. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. All right, <laughs> we'll be right back and wrap things up in a nice tight little ball and uh, get ready for tech talk right after this. You're still watching VLBS. <laughs> Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right. About 10 years ago, a good friend of mine said, I want to do something for the voiceover business. Maybe you know his name, Joe Davis. Everybody knows Joe Davis. If more people know him than know me. It's amazing. The guy's amazing. But as a webmaster, he wanted to find something that could help the voiceover world. And I said, make a templated website so people can get their website up quickly, not in six months, and pay a fortune to a webmaster to do it. Well, he started voiceactorwebsites.com, which now employs like 30 people. So, you know, and I apologize to him every day about that. Uh, but Finally, the technology came around where you could create a website yourself easily using a lot of different templates. And you can customize them. You can uh, change, you know, change the wording in them. You can put whatever graphics you want in it. But it gives you a real easy, basic platform to create your voiceover website. And you can start for free. I mean, how many places can you do that? And there are some other plans, $20 a month to maintain your site, but it's easy to change things. Update your demos, update your bio. Maybe you don't like a picture of yourself in there. You can take that off and you can do it really, really fast. And, you know, George and I tried it out. We got our kids online in no time. Go over to voiceactor.com. That's voiceactor.com and check it out and get your website up really quick, right now. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as WOVO. Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the, the chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living.
Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. All right, we're back. Getting ready for Tech Talk, which is oh, yeah, always a lot of fun. Um, but we have lots of people to thank. Dave Walsh, for starters. What Thanks, a great Dave. hour with him. Dave was amazing. Yeah. Um, always and a crowd pleaser. That's right. <laughs> um, also, uh, remember that uh, George and I do the voiceover home studio thing, so we'll, we'll tell you more about that in a little bit. But we do have to... Uh, we do have to thank our donors of the week. We certainly Who, do. All right, let's see. Let's see how good my vision is from here. I okay. think I can blow it up real good. Okay, there you go. That helps. Okay, so Grace <laughs> Newton, Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Greg Thomas, a Doctor Voice, Antland Productions. I was wearing his T-shirt earlier today. <laughs> Martha Kahn. <laughs> uh, Nine Four Nine Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Uh, Brian Page, great actor. Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shona Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, another great actor. Yeah, and <laughs> Diana Birdsall and, and Sandra Manwiller. Yes. All right. Well, all right. We need to thank our fantastic sponsors who have been with us for millennia. A long time. That's right. Uh, like uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com. And worldvoices.org, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Yes, I am the president, not only a client. Um, <laughs> we need to thank Jeff Holman in the chat room doing a fabulous job tonight. Yeah, and Sue so. Merlino at, at home sitting there going, this shot, They're in their that pods. shot, this shot. They're in their safety pods. That's right. <laughs> All right. Who do we have coming on next time? Next we're time. Take a couple, we're going to take off uh, Memorial. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Right. We'll but take next that. week we have Tech Talk number 103. 103, which we're going to do right now. So don't go anywhere. Don't go nowhere. If you're watching us live, so you can ask your questions and be totally fascinated by what we do. Um, but in three weeks, we have Deb Irwin coming on. Hey, all right. All right. And uh, she's like, I haven't been on your show for 12 years. We're it's close about friends. Dang it's like, time. Okay. All right. We'll put you in on the, on, you know, after Memorial Day. Anyway, this is a very difficult business, as Dave was alluding to. But from George's and my point of view, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VOBS. See you in a bit. See ya. <laughs>